So hello everyone. Thank you for taking the time this morning to join our presentation on specialty nursing education here at Fraser Health. My name is Jordan and I'm a client partner for talent acquisition and onboarding. Before we go over the agenda today, I would like to recognize that Fraser Health provides care on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territories of the Coast Salish and Klakatma Nations and is home to six Métis chartered communities. Fraser Health has our very own Indigenous recruitment and retention team. At this time, I would like to introduce Justine Blanco, who is a client partner for Indigenous recruitment and retention, who will kindly share some further information about this team. Hi everyone, I'm Justine Blanco, a client partner with Indigenous Recruitment and Retention. So I focus on the employment retention with Fraser Health as, long, as well as the um, those recruitment and retention. So I focus on the retention piece as well, which is developing employees within the organization. And so just a little bit about us, our team was first started in 2022. So uh, it was started to supporting the vision, values and purpose and commitments at Fraser Health, including service delivery centered around patients and family. And we work to bring in and retain Indigenous peoples at all levels of the organization, where we focus on navigating the whole employment journey and professional development. And so that's a commitment to creating and directing pathways for Indigenous employees based on culturally safe and valuable employee experience that's based on connection and belonging. And I just included a team picture of us as well. So in the picture is myself, uh, Riel, another client partner, and Carrie, the leader of Indigenous Recruitment and Retention. And we just have a new client partner as well that's uh, joined the team about a month ago, Michaela, and she's also um, another client partner as well. So we hope to actually today we're actually going to get another photo. So that photo will get updated with the four of us. So that's just a little photo of us. And um, uh, if you could just go to the next slide and I can go over a little bit more. So the next slide is just kind of going over um, how someone will be supported. So what we're working on right now is we're working on continually innovating ways to improve the experience of our current Indigenous employees and supporting opportunities. So one of the cool things that came out, which was um, created by Carrie which, and uh, the LED team, which is creating the fire within. So it's an Indigenous leadership program. And the first program started on September 18th. So we look at creating mentorship, leadership, skill acquisition opportunities, as well as creating and promoting Indigenous cultural safety that support retention of our current employees. And we look at bridging employments with post-secondary communities, Indigenous employment and training organizations. So that could be supporting um, new candidates or current employees on courses that they may want to take. And if anyone wants to reach out or learn more about any support, they can uh, email us at the email below. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. Thank you. Thanks so much, Justine, and I'm glad we were able to see your lovely yes. face. So I'm glad <laughs> that <you>. worked out. <laughs> All right, so moving forward with our agenda today, I will give an overview of Fraser Health, and then we will hear from our nursing clinical experts about the nursing specialties we have here at Fraser Health. After that, I will be going over the steps on how to apply, and to conclude the presentation, we will be doing a Q&A. We will be addressing all the questions at the end. However, we do encourage you to submit your questions in the Q&A function throughout this presentation. You'll see the Q&A button near the top of your team screen as displayed in this image here. Following this presentation, Talent Acquisition is hosting one-on-one -on -one booths. So if you have any further questions or would like to continue the conversation about specialty nursing education, we encourage you to sign up for an available slot. Great, so let's chat about Fraser Health. Serving 1.9 million people in Metro Vancouver and the Fraser Valley, Fraser Health is the largest and fastest growing health authority in BC, as well as one of Canada's largest fast and fastest growing health authorities. Fraser Health operates 12 hospitals, including two level one trauma centers. With plenty of opportunity, this makes it a great time to grow your nursing career with Fraser Health by taking the next step with specialty nursing education. Our growth is evident throughout the expansion and redevelopment projects across the Health Authority. Surrey will have a new hospital, which will be a fully digitally equipped electric facility that will be at the forefront of healthcare and innovation, technology and sustainability. 
the emergency department alone will have 55 treatment spaces. We are very excited to announce that we did break ground on the new Surrey Hospital development last week. Royal Columbian Hospital and Burnaby Hospital are currently in a multi-phase redevelopment and expansion projects, and we are pleased to inform that Peace Arch, Eagle Ridge, and Langley Memorial Hospital have recently completed renovations and upgrades. There are many reasons why BC is a great place to practice nursing. To name a few, nurses in BC are now among the highest paid in Canada. Some incentives from the new Provincial Collective Agreement include an additional $2.15 for every hour worked when you're a nurse in a regular position of 0.4 FTE or higher. You will also earn an additional $2 per hour when you're a specialty qualified nurse working in ER, ICU, critical care, and OR. If you choose to pursue specialty education, Fraser Health will support your learning by covering 100% of your tuition fees. We will now dive deeper into the specialty nursing areas. I will hand the floor over to our regional clinical educator, Feldema, who will cover critical care. Good morning and thank you. My name is Fidelma Nichol and I'm the Regional Clinical Nurse Educator for the Critical Care Program at Fraser Health. An ICU nurse means you're a part of an exceptional multidisciplinary team caring for some of the sickest patients in the province. You will use your critical thinking skills, knowledge and decision making to identify prevent and manage life-threatening illness or injury. You will care for patients on full life support due to trauma, disease process, sepsis, shock, myocardial infarction, respiratory failure, stroke, or traumatic brain injury. This is both frightening and exciting at the same time. Caring for patients while they're at their most vulnerable, using up-to-date monitoring and with the support of your team, you will make a difference in the outcome of your patients. ICU nurses are highly trained, caring for patients with dignity, compassion, and respect. Each shift brings new learning opportunities, challenges, skills, and collaboration. As you progress through your first year as a critical care nurse, advanced skills will be taught. We don't stop there. There's ample opportunity for training as CRN, PCC, and outreach. If you like the sounds of this, ICU is for you. At Fraser Health, we have two streams. We have the external program, which is the BCIT program, and we have the Fraser Health Critical Care Program, which I'll be talking about today. Both streams will, will pre prepare you for, uh, for novice ICU practice. The end result is the same, but CCP is a condensed blended program. It's 12 and a half weeks competency based course, which will prepare you for novice independent critical care practice. Using the blended curriculum, we guide you through multiple platforms of education, featuring virtual modalities, high fidelity simulation, instructor-led clinical experiences, and a robust guest lecture series. Emphasis is placed on early socialization into the clinical environment and post-graduation transition support. Building on the successful Essentials of Critical Care Orientation online modules with online synchronized sessions, clinical experience and simulation lab, we have over 100 graduates successfully practicing in ICUs across Fraser Health. Our clinicals are held at Abbotsford, Surrey, and Royal Columbian. You will be placed at the site you are going to or the closest training site to your home hospital. There are several steps to apply. You will email expression of interest to the Fraser Health Education, so FHE at FraserHealth.ca, and the ICU manager of the hospital you want to work at. A four hour shadow shift will be arranged and post shadow shift an interview will be done with the CNE and manager. Fraser Health Education and manager will agree on sponsorship. We will then explore options for a transition line in ICU. 
We will also have a prerequisite, so the Mosby's ECG course or equivalent, and Fraser Health will provide and support as needed. The ECHO online modules are done independently with CNE support as needed. Online synchronized sessions are CNE led. Our SIM and skills labs are held at Abbotsford, Royal Columbian, and Surrey hospitals. Our instructor led clinical shifts are 12 hours, which promotes consolidation and continuity. Throughout the program, reflective journals are assigned. By asking key questions, the journals promote self reflection, practice reflection, critical thinking, goal setting, and organization. Evaluation is ongoing with official evaluations at midterm and final. You will remain full time 150 hours over a four week period and all premiums as per BCNU contract. We pay full time and award full time benefits, including stat holidays. You are given your full schedule weeks in advance of your start date. This allows for a stable work life balance. From this sample schedule, you can see how you will be engaged in the blended learning. At the completion of the critical care program, you will fill out a program evaluation. We review the evaluation as a whole, find themes and make changes as needed. You are a valuable part of the success of Fraser Health and the communities we serve. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Jazz and I am the Regional Clinical Nurse Educator for the Advanced Cardiac Education Pathway, which is also known as the In-House Cardiac High Acuity Program. So, sorry about a second. Um, before I tell you more about the program, I would like to break down what cardiac care looks like in Fraser Health. Fraser Health is the largest health authority in the province and it cares for a number of patients with cardiac conditions. The cardiac network care delivery model breaks down the acuity of this unique patient population into six levels. As you can see from the diagram at the top, uh, we have our most acute and unstable cardiac patients. They would be cared for in critical care and they would take the CCP program that Fidelma just spoke of. Um, but the presentation I'm gonna share with you today focuses on the level two patient population, which is cardiac high acuity patients. That is where the ACE program sits and is geared towards, and that's what I'll talk about in the upcoming slides. All right, so patients on a level two cardiac site are complex. They require continuous cardiac monitoring and are oftentimes hemodynamically unstable. Common diagnoses that you will see on this unit include things like acute coronary syndrome, heart failure, symptomatic arrhythmias, heart valve disorders, among many others. As this patient population can be unstable, the use of non-invasive ventilation and inotropic or vasoactive medications is also common practice on level two cardiac sites. There are six level two sites in Fraser Health. There are two at RCH. Um, so we have two north and two south. Two north is more medical cardiology. Two south is cardiac surgery step down. There's also Surrey's T7, Abbotsford's CCU, Eagle Ridge MCU, and Burnaby 3C. So as you can see, you do have some options for locations to work if you are interested in being cardiac high acuity nurses. Okay. So there are two options for education to become high acuity trained to work on a level two site. I'll discuss both of them with you in the upcoming slides. Firstly, previously in order to be a cardiac high acuity nurse, the BCIT high acuity certification program was the only education option available. As we now have an excellent in-house education option, the BCIT High Acuity Certification has become Fraser Health's non-sponsored education program. So what that means is that Fraser Health will continue to accept this certification as a qualification to work at a level two cardiac site, but we no longer pay for you to take this program. And so next I'll share with you guys the sponsored education that is available. So the sponsored education that supports the development of nurses wanting to be cardiac high acuity trained is called ACE or Advanced Cardiac Education. 
and in the next slide we will talk about what that looks like that program all right so if you are interested in becoming high acuity trained your first step is as Fidel mentioned reach out to the FHE um, for at Fraser Health to express your interest and also connect in with a manager or a senior at one of the level two cardiac sites that I mentioned previously they can arrange a shadow shift with you and discuss your options for lines to apply to for sponsorship of the program. The prerequisites for the program is an accredited dysrhythmia education course. So there's two examples on this slide. We can see that there's the uh, Mosby's ECG 3.0 course that is sponsored by Fraser Health. So if, if you have not rec received any other previous dysrhythmia education, um, and you decide to become cardiac high acuity trained, uh, we will sponsor you for that. Um, or you may uh, take the BCIT NSCC 7150 Dysrhythmia Interpretation and Management course. Um, a lot of uh, undergrad studies students will take it as one of their electives. Uh, there are also other courses um, across Canada that we do accept, but um, we would look at those on a case by case uh, basis. With this education, you can work in a med surge capacity at a level two cardiac site. The next step, though, is to take the uh, phase one of the ACE pathway, which is CLCC, also known as core learning in critical care. That is a three week primarily theory full time studies course where you build your foundational knowledge of high acuity nursing. It runs Monday to Friday, eight to four is primarily virtual, but does also include some in person skills and simulation days to give learners the opportunity to start to put theory into practice. The next step is for the learners to return to their unit, their level two site to further consolidate the theory. This time period is anywhere from one to three months, depending on which cohort of the year you are signed up for. And then the, the second and last phase is the ACE piece of the program, which is a five week full time studies course that further builds your theory, but is primarily focused on clinical. The clinical for ACE are both in the critical care setting so that learners can work with acute and deteriorating patients as well as in the cardiac high acuity units so that they can get more tailored cardiac knowledge. Upon completion of the ACE, um, the learners are considered cardiac high acuity trained. I'm going to finish with one of my favorite quotes. Nurses are the beating heart of the healthcare system. And if you enjoy working with patients uh, with cardiac conditions, then advanced cardiac education is for you. Thank you. Everyone, my name is Harjot. I am uh, the clinical practice consultant for Mickey. So I cover neonatal, perinatal, and uh, perinatal perioperative. So we'll go ahead and get started with uh, neonatal NICU. So neonatal nurses provide critical care and support to newborns and their families through this challenging transition. Uh, they work with a variety of medical conditions such as prematurity, birth defects, heart defects, infections, and much more. Through this program, you will gain the necessary skills and knowledge to provide care to, the, to neonates. Um, so neonatal nurses provide family-centered care, work closely with the newborn um, and their family. They help prepare the family with knowledge and provide care to the newborn, um, help them Provide them with the knowledge that they need uh, to provide care when they are home. Um, the neonatal nurse team consists of neonatologists, uh, pediatricians, RTs, social work, physio. So you'll be working very closely with all of these individuals. Being part of the journey with this family as they transition to parenthood with a neonate requiring additional care is very rewarding. Um, it's a time that the family actually will never forget. So in Fraser Health, we have three uh, levels of acuity. Level one is low risk and level three is high risk. So level one NICU um, would be at LMH. Um, they provide care to neonates who may have an infection or require support with glucose regulation. Um, Abbotsford and Burnaby are level two NICUs. They provide care to newborns who require increased observations, such as um, needing so newborn needing CPAP. Uh, RCH and SMH uh, are level three DICUs, and so they'll be providing care to neonates that require ventilation. 
So Fraser Health offers BCIT neonatal uh, nursing specialty for education. Um, there are three intakes of this program a year. This program is about 23 weeks long. The prerequisites for this program is uh, 7100, 7100, which is theory one. This is offered online over 12 weeks. Um, if you're sponsored by Fraser Health to complete this, you'll complete this while you are still working. Um, otherwise, you may have already completed this on your own, and in that case, you won't have to take it again. So this, these 12 weeks towards the 23 weeks will not, uh, will not be something that you have to worry about. The following 12 weeks of is full time studies. Um, so for this, you'll be released from work to attend uh, school full time, uh, so online and in person. Um, you will receive full time pay during these 12 weeks, and then upon successful completion, you will be able you'll be able to work as a qualified neonatal nurse. So with this program to receive the perinatal certificate um, and to get the qualif qualification differential, you will need to complete the additional three credit course and the breastfeeding course. Unfortunately, that's not part of the sponsored um, education, so that's just something additional you would have to work towards afterwards. The neonatal uh, specialty program is offered at uh, Abbotsford, Burnaby, um, Royal Columbian, and Surrey Memorial. Moving on to perinatal. So perinatal nurses work in partnership with childbearing individuals, newborns, and their families during this, ch during this life ch uh, changing transition. They are part of the three stages of pregnancy, so antepartum, interpartum, and postpartum. So it's not just one stage of pregnancy that you'll get to see, um, it's all three that you'll be part of with the patient. So perinatal nurses work in a dynamic work environment. One minute you are supporting a patient during the, the delivery of their newborn, and the next minute you might be dealing with a life-threatening postpartum hemorrhage. You are always thinking of what could happen next and preparing, so you're really applying your critical thinking skills. Uh, the perinatal team consists of doctors, OBs, midwives, perinatologists, pediatrician, pharmacists, care aides, unit clerks, and the list can go on. But these are just a few of the individuals you work closely with when providing care to um, moms and babies. Perinatal nursing is not only about providing physical care, but it involves lots of education for the patient and the family. For example, providing education on pain management options while they're in labor, um, to providing education on newborn bathing and cord care. It's very rewarding being part of a journey, part of this journey with the patient and helping them learn how, how to provide care to the newborn. Um, and this is where your opportunity comes in to apply your relational practice skills that you've gained over the years. So Fraser Health offers two education streams, BCIT and Fraser Health um, Education, which is the in-house program, which started about a year ago. So I'll go into both of those. So BCIT program is referred to as a perineal specialty program. Um, it is offered three times a year. The full program is over 24 weeks. Um, the prerequisites for this program um, is 7100, so same as um, for the NICU course. Uh, this is offered online over 12 weeks. Um, if you're sponsored by Fraser Health to do this course, you'll uh, you'll complete this course while you're working. Um, again, some of you may already have this course, so in that case, you'll not be required to take it again and it can just be applied. Um, the following 12 weeks is full-time studies. For this, you will be released from work to attend school full-time, um, receive full-time pay over these 12 weeks, and then upon successful completion, you will be able to work as a qualified perinatal nurse. With this program, uh, same thing, to, in order to receive the certificate, you do need to complete an additional three credit course um, or have a course transferred that, uh, that BCIT will accept. But again, you can you are qualified to work without the certificate. So the second stream of education that we have is uh, the Fr Fraser Health uh, Perineal Advanced Training Program, um, which is also referred to as PAT, or the in-house program. Uh, this program is offered three times a year as well, um, and this is over 14 weeks. The only prerequisite for this course is NRP. So. For the 14 weeks, you will be released from work to attend the program full time. 
um, which will be online and in person. Uh, this program follows a blended learning approach, meaning that one day you'll focus on theory, the next day you'll be practicing the skills, and the following day you'll be applying those skills in clinical. With this program, you will receive a certificate upon successful completion, um, and then be able to apply for the qualification differential. So this program is offered at Abbotsford, Burnaby, Chilliwack, Langley, Peace Arch, Ridge Meadows, um, Royal Columbian, and Surrey. So actually both programs are offered at both sites, at all these sites here. So perinatal perioperative. Um, so perinatal perioperative nurses provide care to individuals and their families undergoing cesarean section uh, birth and recovery. There are two uh, roles perinatal, perinatal perioperative nurses play, which are the scrub nurse and the circulating nurse. Both are involved in providing perioperative, intraoperative and postoperative care. This program is exclusive to the family birthing unit at Fraser, uh, Surrey Memorial Hospital for uh, skilled perinatal nurses. So what makes this program so special or being a peri perinatal perioperative nurse is uh, perinatal perioperative nurses play a key role as patient advocates. Um, patients having a C-section may be awake during the process, but they are most vulnerable during this time. Um, you are not only working alone in this process, but you've got a team and that team includes the OBs, uh, the doctors, so it might be a GP, a midwife, um, the anesthesiologist, perinatal nurses, the unit clerks, care aides. Everyone plays an integral role in providing care to the patient during this uh, vital time. As previously mentioned, uh, the perinatal perioperative, pro perioperative nurse plays a um, diverse role as the scrub nurse and the circulating nurse. And you also play a role as the perinatal nurse as well um, because you have that experience. It's also very rewarding being part of this vulnerable and exciting journey um, for the patient and the family. So the perinatal uh, perioperative program is offered once or twice a year um, and you are and you are required to have completed the perinatal specialty program before being able to apply this to this program. The program is approximately eight to nine weeks of paid full time studies, um, which you'll again receive uh, re release from work to attend this program. The program, uh, the theory is delivered online and simulation and skills are and clinical are in person. And then upon successful completion, you are qualified to work as a perinatal uh, perioperative nurse. Um, but again, there's no certificate for this one. And as previously mentioned, this program is only offered at Surrey. And we'll move on to nephrology now. Hi everyone, my name is Christy Mills. I am the clinical nurse educator in the Career Pathways and Advanced Training Team, joining all my colleagues. It's uh, nice to have you today. Um, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about nephrology nursing. I'm responsible for helping everyone um, move through their careers in the nephrology uh, world. <clears throat> so nephrology nursing is um, an amazing place for those who love to build very close relationships over a long period of time with your patients and families. Working within the hemodialysis units means you're usually a systematic person who thrives on similar routines every day while also having the ability to adapt to your patient care needs. Um, hemodialysis nurses understand kidney functions and try to replace normal renal function as closely as possible. Hemodialysis is where an individual has a portion of their blood removed from their body and processed through an artificial kidney to filter out waste products and remove excess fluids. This process is fascinating and life-saving. And if that sounds like something you're, that's intriguing to you and you would love to work with patients and education on the science of it all, renal nursing might be for you. 
Um, so nephrology nursing requires a great deal of communication with the team and a passion for figuring out the renal system and what makes the client walk through the doors. The renal world has the support of BC Renal, which is an association that works closely with our teams, um, and it's a very close-knit staff community. The education op options are endless, and the quality of leadership and teamwork is really unique to the nephrology team. Many people who begin in nephrology stay for the remainder of their careers because of the flexibility in schedules, falling in love with the patient population, and feeling the rewards of making a daily impact on a patient's quality of life. Um, so there is a lot of options for where you can work in renal in Fraser Health. There's um, lots of uh, clinics in the community. There's community ca kidney care clinics where if a patient is starting to go down the path towards needing hemodialysis, where they they have their renal functioning checked, they um, you get to work with the nephrologists um, and they check in there. There's the pre-transplant clinics, the post-transplant clinics. So it's amazing to have the community options. There's a community uh, dialysis units, um, which is where a lot of our sponsored um, staff end up working in. And um, the hemodialysis in-center in Fraser Health is the focus of today and usually where people start being sponsored through. Um, so clearly the best part about becoming a hemodialysis nurse is that it can open the door to all these subspecialty clinics with a different focus, helping patients before, during, after needing that renal support. And it is quite a, a great program because of all of the acute and community-based care that you can do. Um, so we are grateful to have partnered with BCIT to offer nephrology education in their compressed time frame course, where you will be released to work to attend um, paid full time studies similar to everybody else. There are three intakes per year through BCIT. The length of the program is fairly short considering the other uh, options are so it's 14 weeks, seven of which is theory courses, seven weeks clinical. And at the end of your clinical, you are qualified to work in a hemodialysis unit, um, but you do need to uh, take additional uh, courses to receive a certificate. Um, the Fraser Health sponsored sites are offered at Abbotsford Regional, Royal Columbian Hospital, and Surrey Memorial. And then, of course, you have those options to work at the community dialysis units um, as well. And this education is offered to both uh, registered nurses and licensed practical nurses. So um, that concludes my portion of the presentation. Hopefully, uh, you will consider renal and come, come work with us. Hello. Hi, um, my name is Nicole Hogan, and I will be talking to you about the PACU nursing specialty and the Fraser Health uh, PACU education program. Sorry, I'm just working with my computer here. Um, so what is PACU nursing? PACU nurses are highly trained critical care nurses that work with uh, hospitals post-anesthesia care units. Um, they care for patients who have just received surgery and are receiving, are recovering from the uh, effects of anesthesia. PACU nurses take care of a diverse, multi-generational patient population in a fast-paced environment. They carefully monitor a patient's vital signs, assess their levels of consciousness, and watch out for any side effects from anesthesia or complications of surgery. They stabilize and optimize patients' physiological and psychological well-being directly following surgery. They prepare patients at this critical time for the next phase in their surgical journey, inpatient surgical floor, ICU, surgical daycare, and then home. Nurses in the PACU need to be expert communicators and collaborators. They work alongside a multidisciplinary team, which includes surgeons, anesthetists, ORRNs, PACU colleagues, and site leadership. They are also responsible for communicating with the patient and their family and begin education on post-operative care. So why choose PACU? Well, PACU is a fast-paced and ever-changing environment. No two days ever look alike. 
There's close communication and teamwork with the multidisciplinary surgical team, which creates a close-knit team atmosphere. Opportunities for continuing education and competence, such as pediatric sim days, uh, training in ACLS, which is advanced cardiac life support, um, close proximity to patients and staff during the day, focus on one to two patients at a time, plus helping your colleagues, and use of your critical care skills. Uh, on this slide, we have a few quotes from actual PACU RNs describing what they love about PACU nursing. Um, one says that they are they love being able to support people through a critical time in their surgical journey. Um, another says that they love that it's no two days are ever the same and it's exciting in its own way. And the third person says they love that feeling of satisfaction they get from receiving a patient who is just waking during that vulnerable period and then moving on to sending them out stable, warm and comfortable. So where can you practice PACU nursing in Fraser Health? Well, there's many sites. Um, there's three tertiary sites. Um, the following slide shows us um, all the hospitals in Fraser Health where PACU nursing is practiced and where uh, educational sponsorship is available. Um, the three tertiary sites are large, larger hospitals that also may have spe specific surgical specialties, um, such as vascular, neuro, or thoracic. Uh, you will be exposed to a large variety of surgeries. But the smaller community sites create a close-knit work culture and shifts vary between uh, seven and a half hours to 12 and have various start times. In most locations, there's also an on-call component as well. So how do I become a PACU nurse? Well, there's a few different roads to PACU. As you begin your nursing career, one may start on a medicine or surgical inpatient unit prior to entering into a critical care program. PACU is a critical care area, so critical care training is essential. You will have just learned um, from the lovely Fadama that about the critical care education options through Fraser Health. Uh, PEP, otherwise known as PACU Education Program, can be completed directly following critical care training. Some choose a career in PACU after ICU or emergency experience, and there is PACU education available to those as well. We can guide you as to the next steps. The PACU Education Program is a three-week full-time blended learning experience. It ex includes online learning modules. Uh, these modules are called Mosby's Orientation to Perianesthesia Nursing, and this content is approved by the National Association of Perianesthesia Nurses of Canada. Um, we have simulation and skills labs. Um, there are synchronous activities, which means we do it all together, um, and there are virtual, such as virtually, virtual, regionally, CNE led classes. So I will be teaching those classes. Clinical experience at your home PACU as well. Upon successful completion of the Fraser Health PACU education program, uh, you will have a beginning understanding of PACU nursing practice and be ready to practice as a novice PACU nurse. Um, you will be able to care for at least one stable patient at a time, and you will have increased confidence moving into orientation. So this slide shows you some examples of the PACU education topics, all the exciting topics that you would be learning. So we do have uh, some education on pediatrics in the PACU. Um, we also do provide education on post cesarean section care that occurs in most post anesthetic care units in the region. Um, details about general anesthesia and all the pharmacology involved with that. And uh, I'll just let you just look over the slide and just see all the exciting opportunities there. So you might be wondering why PACU education? So why PACU education? Well, because PACU requires a specialized body of knowledge, regardless of your background, and empowers you to provide excellent care according to our PACU care standards. Let's find out what PACU education learners have to say. 
So one learner says, I'm now comfortable with caring for a patient who is not fully awake from anesthesia because I understand what they have undergone, what the medications mean in terms of their responses and how to stir them up. This was a piece that was new to me coming from critical care into PACU. I'm so grateful for this, along with many other examples of the PACU education, independent from her BC. This person was from BCIT, ICU specialty training. Um, another person says, I love the surgical pathway meets critical care in PACU nursing. I love the goals for the patient's experience in PACU, primarily to recover from the anesthesia. And she loves the team approach and how everyone works together for the safety of the patient and the flow of the floor. So it helps enable you to be comfortable caring for directly post-op patients, increase understanding of pharmacology, and the knowledge needed in addition to critical care training to work in the recovery room. So thank you very much for your attention, and I hope to see some of you in PACU one day. Now uh, for the next presentation uh, that has been kindly recorded by Anna, who is going to describe the perioperative program. Hello, everybody. My name is Anna Pasternak Bannerer, and I'm a clinical practice consultant with Learning Strategy and Innovation Team. Um, I'm covering surgical services, and I'll be talking about perioperative program. Perioperative nursing presents a vault of exciting opportunities for individuals who are enthusiastic and driven. It encompasses advanced communication skills and demands seamless collaboration within the surgical team. Within the, this dynamic field, there are two pivotal roles of scrub and circulating nursing. By working together, these roles ensure the best possible outcomes for patients undergoing surgery. So why perioperative nursing and how do you know this is for you? If you have excellent communication skills and work effectively under pressure, looking for a teamwork-based and collaborative environment with the ability to adapt to various specialties, attentive to details and have the capacity to anticipate, this is the right path for you. Challenging and rewarding career, that's definitely one of the perioperative nursing aspects. Specialized skills in surgical procedures, high standard patient care, diverse roles within specialty, advanced career opportunities such as leadership and education, they're all part of a great perioperative career pathway. Some of the roles and responsibilities for perioperative. So, for example, scrub nurse involves direct assistance to the surgeon throughout the surgical procedure. Scrub nurses are responsible for meticulously preparing and managing all the surgical equipment required for the operation. Circulating nurse is orchestrating the OR environment, operating in close collaboration with every member of the surgical team. Circulating while focusing on maintaining a safe and comfortable setting, allowing for the smooth execution of the procedure. Comprehensive patient care before, during, and after surgical procedure are only some of the responsibilities of the perioperative nursing. Advocate for patients by ensuring best patient care when safety and comfort are priority. And optimizing patient surgical outcome. Our region is divided into community and tertiary sites. The community sites are smaller with fewer acute patients with a higher volume of healthier patients. They are not, those sites are not necessarily open 24 seven and have on-call services. Tertiary sites are more immense trauma centers treating complex surgical cases with increased comorbidities and significant traumas. Perioperative program has been tailored to certain site. The beginning of your journey should start with exposing yourself to periop settings. And the exposure can be as a shadow shift. 
knowing that audience for this career fair may be at a different stage of their nursing journey, this slide can help you determine how you want to set yourself up for success. As I said, the first step is the exposure to see if this environment and the type of nursing is something you wish to pursue. There is an opportunity for an OR shadow shift suitable for nursing students and Fraser Health employees. Secondly, look for additional opportunities working in surgical settings, such as student nurse, for example, in surgical daycare, to gain more experience and see the perspective of perioperative settings. Additionally, Fraser Health has a new BSN pathway program where we partnered with selected post-secondary institution to enroll eligible final preceptorship students into internal perioperative education program. This means that upon completion as a new graduate, you would have the requirement to practice and begin orientation at the sponsoring site. This is a new initiative, and if you're a student nurse and want to learn more, please email fhe at fraser.ca. Two streams that a person who decided that this perioperative career pathway is for you, I need to choose between BCIT perioperative education and EORN, Association of Perioperative Nursing Education. Each program is working with a different site. The decision to partner with either BCIT or ARN for perioperative nursing education should be influenced by factors such as geographical location, institutional affiliation, and the specific curriculum and resources offered by each program. So how do you choose what site and what program is for you? What questions should you ask to help you decide? What steps to take to ensure that this is the right career choice for you? So start with asking what site would you like to work at? Then you should ask and apply for shadow shift. Afterwards, contact specialty nursing education team. Once you've decided, go on Pulse and review the optional dates and start planning. So AORN program, it's a 17-week full-time education program that includes blended learning curriculum, theory, skill labs, clinical practice, self-reflection, and evaluation. BCIT program includes prerequisite 12 weeks online dependent study, followed by CTF 16 weeks of full time education program. This program is delivered via a hybrid approach with theory online and clinical at the sponsoring site. The theory content provides graduate with funda foundational knowledge for novice level perioperative competencies. Clinical is completed through an instructor supported preceptorship. Now, in order to start planning, BCIT prerequisites, the next intake is in January, followed by CTF in April. EORN, the schedule varies between different sites. I would like to highlight that while your destination may be perioperative nursing, each individual career journey is unique and may look different than others. No matter what stage are you at, I encourage you to get in contact with our team and we can navigate your career path with you. We encourage you to start the dialogue early with sponsoring sites to express your interest and have a professional development conversations. Looking forward to hearing from you.
Hello, I'm Terry Jones, the Clinical Practice Consultant for Emergency Advanced Education. I'll be taking the next few minutes to highlight what emergency nursing is and what makes it special. I will then provide you with a brief overview of the emergency departments within Fraser Health and walk you through what the emergency nursing career pathway for registered nurses looks like and highlight the options for advanced education. So emergency medicine is, special, is a specialty concerned with the care of illnesses or injuries requiring immediate medical attention. Emergency nurses and physicians care for unscheduled and undifferentiated patients of all ages and must be able to quickly identify the sickest patients. Unlike many nursing specialty, unlike many nursing specialties, emergency nursing transcends any narrow confines and includes the provision of care that ranges across all demographics and physiological processes from birth to death. There's health promotion to end of life care, behavioral health to infectious illnesses, chronic disease to sudden death collapse, health collapse, and intermittent crisis to progressive decline in health. In the emergency department, you get to work alongside many different professions. There's physicians, respiratory, respiratory therapists, social workers, um, psych liaison nurses, jury nurses, and other specialists to make sure the patients are given the best care possible. You have the chance to really feel like you've made a difference for the patients utilizing the teamwork within the eMERGE department. As the emergency departments are so busy, there's a fair amount of autonomy within the nursing practice. We have the emergency network who governs the emergency nursing standards of care, which allow us to practice within a different scope than regular nursing practice. Examples being doing nursing initiated orders. You'll be given You'll never get bored working in the eMERGE department either. It truly is a dynamic and fast-paced environment where you get to see and do so many different skills and work with all of the different patient populations all in one shift. As you can see, the table represents the volume of patients that each emergency department sees in one year. There is a fit for everyone. Whether you like to be super busy and deal with a higher acuity, such as our tertiary sites at Surrey Memorial, RCH, or Abbotsford, or would like to have a closer knit community feel with the smaller staff ratios, Fraser Health will have a place for you. Here in the emergency departments in Fraser Health, we like to ensure that you are being supported and develop your emergency competencies using a laddering approach. We offer mentorship and support through the different career pathways. You start off your journey as a transition nurse, where we offer a unique program called the Emergency Competency Education Pathway, or ESUP for short, Essentials Program. During your time as a transition nurse, you are building on your med surge nursing, and you will be coached and mentored by an ESUP CNE. Along with your site CNE, the ESUP CNE will help support your growth and development towards becoming ready for advanced education. You'll have a discussion with your site manager and choose an education program that works for you. Post advanced education, you are deemed eMERGE qualified and you will continue to receive support and mentorship from your site and work towards becoming an experienced emergency nurse where you get to work in the trauma and recess room, learn to triage patients and lead your team. Here in Fraser Health, we have two options for advanced education, the BCIT program and Fraser Health in-house program called ESEP phase one and two. Both programs use a blended learning approach using theory, simulation, and clinical experiences. The programs focus on the early integration of linking theory to clinical practice. The programs are committed to developing practitioners that not only understand the pathophysiology behind disease processes, but are also able to synthesize and apply that knowledge in an ever-evolving and complex environment. Upon completion of BCIT and ESEP Phase 1, you will receive a certificate that, um, and are deemed eMERGE qualified within Fraser Health and comply for your um, stipend for your HR. So I'm going to start um, with an overview of what the BCIT emergency program is like. So BCIT is offered three times a year with full-time studies taking place from September to December, January to April, or April to June. The program starts with prerequisites um, that are 12 weeks in length. While you are enrolled in the prerequisites, you'll be working your regular shifts while completing the assignments and readings. 
prerequisites occur mostly online. However, there are a few days you will need to be present in person. If there are classroom or exams, um, they're all held at the Burnaby campus at BCIT, and you'll be released for work if you um, to attend if you are do have a shift on that day. The full-time component is comprised of both theory, simulations, and clinical experiences. It runs Monday to Friday and is 12 weeks, 12 weeks in duration. Theory two and clinical one are the first seven weeks, and upon successful completion, you will then continue on with the remaining five weeks of theory three and clinical two. Theory classes are again mostly in person at the Burnaby campus and clinical placements can be anywhere within the lower mainland and will change between clinical one and clinical two. BCIT also uses a clinical instructor model with approximately a four student to one instructor ratio. So ESEP is an advanced training program which allows for another method of preparing registered nurses to become emergency trained within Fraser Health. The program is divided into two phases which allow learners to develop their practice with mentorship and support with emergency competencies before moving on to gaining trauma um, knowledge and skills. Both phases are offered three times a year. And both phases also use the Emergency Nurses Association Emergency Nursing Orientation Modules. These modules are what the rest of Canada uses and are used in the United States. So the first phase is ESEP Phase 1. It's 18 weeks um, in duration. There are six weeks of pre-reading time and 12 weeks of full-time blended learning. Classes are either virtual or in person, and the sites can range being at Abbotsford, Surrey, or RCH. Clinical is at your home site and uses a preceptorship model where you're, you as the learner are fully immersed in your home environment and supported by an ESEP CNE as well. By learning via preceptorship model at your home site, not only are we Will this allow you to learn the site's culture and flow, but will provide an opportunity for all staff to learn the benefits of mentorship and providing feedback to one another. The theory and simulation days are Monday to Friday from 8 to 4, and clinical time will vary as it is dependent on your preceptor schedules. And as the schedules fluctuate, and you will be preceptoring in nights and weekends potentially, you will be receiving the shift differentials as appropriate. Upon successful completion of phase one, you will receive an emergency department um, qualification certificate for Fraser Health, and you will also receive certificates in our dysrhythmia education program, which is SkillStat, advanced care life support, pediatric advanced life support, and appropriate transcripts for the ENO module. Post phase one, once you have worked for a few months and consolidated your new skills as an emergency qualified nurse, we will reach out and start to recruit for the trauma and resuscitation component of your pathway. This is known as the ESEP phase two program. This typically takes roughly six months post phase one to really consolidate your new emergency competencies prior to enrolling, um, but that's not for necessarily for anybody. You could do it after three months, you could do it after a year, or you could do it not at all. Phase two is four weeks in duration and is comprised of two weeks of theory and sims. Um, these are held at Surrey Memorial and you get around five or six shifts of clinical. Clinical is shared between um, a tertiary site and your home site if you are from the community hospital. If you are from a tertiary site, we, you tend to stay there um, and do your clinical at your home site. Upon completion of phase two, you'll receive a certificate and transcripts for the ENO trauma modules. And again, as ESEP is a Fraser Health um, program, you will need to complete both phases in order to work outside of this health authority locally. So that's within just the lower mainland. The other provinces use a very similar approach to how ESEP phase one and two is set up and use very similar models. Therefore, you will be considered EDQ out of province um, if you move and only complete phase one. Now, if you have a passion for pediatrics and eMERGE nursing, but have no desire to provide adult emergency care, Fraser Health also has you covered. 
We have a pediatric specialty specific eMERGE department at Surrey Memorial Hospital where you can specialize in pediatric nursing. Advanced education sponsorship is offered at Surrey Memorial only. Again, the prerequisites are the same as the regular eMERGE program. And as you can see, the full-time studies are 13 weeks instead of 12. The theory content is focused on pediatric emergency care only, and the additional class is a PAL certification. Clinical experiences are held at Surrey Memorial Peds Emerge Department or at BC Children's Emerge Department. Classes run from May to August with full time in September to December, and December to March with full time in April to June. I hope you've become an Emerge nurse and come and join the dark side. So much fun. I love it. And thank you for listening. Okay, so now that you've heard about the different um, advanced education programs that we have, um, we're going to talk now a little bit about the eligibility for specialty nursing in general. What we'd like to see is that you have either passed your NCLEX or that you are currently active um, or have an active practicing BCCNM registration. As far as the NCLEX is concerned, as long as you are like at least are registered for it and are going to try to take it, that's okay too, but we would prefer it if you already had passed it, but it's not a deterrent. Um, we need to be a permanent resident of Canada or a Canadian citizen. We'd love it if you had a current BLS certification, which is um, an onboarding Fraser Health requirement anyways. You will have a commitment to an 18-month return of service. Um, so we just want you to be aware of what that is, and I believe Jordan's going to get more in um, talk about that a little bit more, but that's just something that you need to be aware of that when you sign these programs, this is part of it. Um, and preference will be given to applicants um, who have not previously been sponsored for specialty education within the last two years. So really there's not a whole heck of a lot that we're looking for. Uh, we just want a passion for one of these specialties and come and talk to us. And I'll pass <laughs> it over to Jordan. All right, thank you so much, Terry, and thank you to our clinical experts for sharing all of this valuable and informative information. If any of these nursing specialties have sparked your interest, let's talk about the next steps, which will be submitting your application and expression of interest. <clears throat> All right, so if you are a current Fraser Health employee wanting to apply to specialty nursing education, please use the usual process, which is going to your Fraser Health internal profile under Fraser Health Info to apply for any of the transition lines of interest and to the SNE posting, which is posting number 20221046. I do have it on bold here just in case you wanted to note that down. If you don't see any transition lines available, please still apply to the SNE post to express your interest for upcoming education seats. Please note you can only apply to this posting once, so please ensure that your resume and contact information is up to date. We've mentioned transition line a couple times, so I just wanted to go over what that is. A transition line provides qualified registered nurses the opportunity to consolidate your skills through rotating through a specialty nursing unit prior to taking the specialty nursing education. The end goal of being in the transition line is to complete your specialty nursing education and become a specialty qualified nurse on the unit that you are working on. The next step after application would be to interview and potentially partic participate in a shadow shift on that unit. Please note, in order to proceed, we will need a reference from your current nursing manager. So it's a good idea to have that in place when you apply, just so it's all ready when we ask for that. And if you have any questions about the application process at all, you could reach out to our client partner for talent acquisition and onboarding, Annette McLean, who will be able to assist you through this process. Now, if you are an external applicant interested in s &E, the first step would be to complete a profile on careers.fraserhealth.ca. You will then use your profile to apply to any transition lines available that may interest you and the s &E posting to express your interest. You'll then be contacted by a recruiter or a hiring manager for next steps, which will include an interview. Please note, we will require two references and one must include your current manager. Now for 
applying as an external, the posting is the same. So it's 20221046. And if you have any questions, please connect with us. Now, if you're a new grad nurse interested in specialty nursing education, please apply through the Fraser Health new grad posting, which is listed here as well. So it's 20234376. And please indicate in your application your interest, your interest in the applicable SNE, uh, specialty nursing education. Fraser Health will support you as a new grad by enrolling you into the new grad program, which includes 112 hours of supernumerary mentorship on the unit that hires you and up to 7.5 hours of education. All right, now at this time, we would like to invite you to submit any questions that you may have. Um, you could use the question and answer feature on the top of this team's presentation and you could see it in the image here. It should be right beside your chat icon. Um, you could also feel free to um, write it in the chat as well if you cannot find the Q&A. And you can ask questions about any of the specialty areas that we discussed or about anything about the application process as well. We have a question about AORN here. So which Fraser Health sites offer that? So Surrey Memorial, Abbotsford, Chilliwack, and RCH. We'll wait a minute or so. I can answer. There's one in the in the chat as well, in the Q&A, um, which asks about when is it full-time studies for the ACE program. Um, so when the learners first go into the three week, the, the theory course, the CLCC, that one um, does not require a change in your like PC and E. You don't get moved into a different line. So it's coded a bit differently in the actual full time studies portion that you move into a PC and E, which is something that we have to do for anyone going into specialty education. Um, that occurs during the five weeks of, of ACE. So prior to that, you still remain like in whatever line you were in prior to education. So only for the five weeks of ACE. I hope that answers the question. I think it was um, Sorry, the name got cut off now. Teresa, who asked that question. Awesome. We have another question for OR about who to reach out to for a shadow shift. Kimberly, that's a great question. I believe we actually do have a one on one scheduled, so we can go more into that later. But I think the first step, if you are interested in OR, would be to submit your um, expression of interest via that posting that we shared. If you have any further questions about that, we could always um, chat more later today. We have a question about PACU in the chat here. Um, Nicole, if you'd like to take that, that would be awesome. Sure. Um, let's see here. The question is just not showing up for me right now. No worries. I could read it out for you. So yeah, Fatima, that sounds good. yeah. So Fatima is asking, would you be able to go through the PACU education process, does the Fraser Health in-house program offer a certificate that allows you to work across Canada and the U.S.? Okay, those are really good questions. So the process um, for PACU education, depending on your background, so you may uh, need the critical care training, which in with in that case, um, our team will help you to navigate that uh, whole process of being able to register into one of the critical care um, training options, whether that be our in-house critical care or BCIT. Um, so if you contact Fraser Health, uh, FHE at FraserHealth.ca, um, there will be somebody that will be able to help you navigate through that process. Um, so then, after your critical care training, uh, when you are applying for that, you would express your interest in PACU. Um, and they will help you to get lined up into the PACU cohort that would be uh, completed right after your critical care training. Um, and then the next part of the question, Jordan, I don't know why I can't see it. But no worries. So it says, yeah. does the Fraser Health in-house program offer a certificate that allows you to work across Canada and the U.S.? So I think they're just wondering about the in-house, if that is recognized. 
Sure. Um, so you do receive a critical care certificate following the critical care training. Um, but as far as the PACU education, um, you received a cert certificate of completion, um, but it, there is no uh, nationally recognized PACU certificate at this time. Um, but um, having the PACU training, it is something that you can uh, put on your resume and it would qualify you to work in other recovery rooms in the country and across the region. Thanks, Nicole. The team, I hope that answered your question. Looks like it did. Thanks, Nicole. Okay, so I don't see any other questions in the chat or the Q&A. So <clears throat> I think we will wrap up the question and answer period. However, if you do have any more questions or if you would like to continue the conversation, please do sign up for one of the one on one sessions after this presentation. We do have slots available for each specialty, so we would love to connect with you further. And I'd like to thank everybody for joining the presentation today. There was a lot of information, but speaking for myself it was super informative and i really appreciate everyone's participation and we really hope to hear from you and see how you could grow your career with specialty nursing education here at fraser health so thank you so much everyone have a great day